Oh, hi guys. Need to use up that chicken? Let me show you how. table Sydney here and today we are going to be talking a little bit more about how to stretch those different foods that you're buying at the grocery store um, last time we we cut up a whole entire chicken and we showed how easily that can be done and today we're going to utilize a little bit of that chicken now one way that you can stretch your food dollars a little bit again we're we're still dealing with the pandemic and food prices have drastically increased so when you go to the grocery store, sometimes you might find meat is a little bit more expensive or um, vegetables even can sometimes be a little bit more expensive. However, we are getting into those warmer months. And so we can start growing our own gardens this time of year. Um, we can also find produce that is in season. So that makes it a little bit more affordable as well. Um, and your vegetables are gonna be significantly cheaper than um, your meats. So keeping that in mind, when we're looking for recipes, a great way to kind of stretch those food dollars would be to find a recipe that's maybe a vegetarian dish. And if you want to throw in a little bit of meat in there as well, you can do that. But that way you are pumped up with all of the vegetables and you have plenty of that in your recipe um, so that you don't really need a ton of meat added to that. So that being said, what we're making today, it was a vegetable curry, but again, we're utilizing that chicken. So some more of that chicken, we have um, a two of the thighs here and um, we'll be starting with that, but we're gonna add that to our vegetable curry so that it will give it a little bit of meat in there as well, a little bit of extra protein. So for our, um, our chicken thighs here, we do still have that skin on and ideally you would use a filet knife here, but I do not, I did not bring that one over here with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut away that, that skin with my chef's knife, which still can get the job done. That chef's knife is a great tool um, to utilize and it's an easy way to only have one knife in the chicken that, or sorry, one knife in the kitchen that you are working with. So we're just going to take this and cut this guy up. And you could do, of course, more meat than this if you needed to. Just depends on, you know, how many folks you're feeding and all of that. Or as the recipe indicates, you could go strictly vegetarian with it and add no meat. But a great thing about this is that you can absolutely um, make this work with whatever you've got on hand. So if you had shrimp, if you had pork that was on sale, um, that's another tip for you when you are trying to save a little bit of money at the grocery store, especially during this time of, of where things are just a little bit more pricey, you can absolutely um, just choose whatever's on sale, whatever meat might be on sale. Now these were deboned and the way Kelly did that was she just kind of stuck her finger in there and she just pulled the bones out. So it's more of a feel, a feel it and pull it kind of deal um, versus kind of how we did with the, uh, with the chicken breasts, we simply cut them away from the bone. You don't do that with the chicken thighs here. So I'm just gonna cut this up into those smaller pieces And yes, we are using dark meat chicken. Um, with our dark meat, we do tend to have a little bit more fat on that, uh, which, you know, if we're trying to be mindful of reducing that. But again, we're not using a ton here. I'm only using two thighs. And then we're really pumping this up with those vegetables. 
And it's all about balance. Everything that we talk about with health and nutrition is about balance. And we want to make sure that we are keeping that in mind whenever we are um, thinking of our meals, especially during a time where things are a little bit more expensive and maybe you don't have the budget to buy some of those leaner, leaner options. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. We don't need a ton in our pan simply because this is a fattier meat. So it is going to um, give a little bit more fat to it as we're cooking. And I just have this on low for now, but I'll kind of pump it up. And this is all done in one pot, which is another wonderful thing because we love not having nearly as many different dishes to have to clean up, right? So um, I also am gonna make some jasmine rice to go with this. So my second pot is boiling and, or it's about to be boiling and we are gonna be adding our rice to that as well. So we'll let this heat up. I'm gonna add, uh, once our pot gets boiling, we'll add our rice and we'll see you guys back in just one second. Star Communications strives to provide you with the best video services. That's why we invested in cutting-edge video equipment to bring you new features such as Cloud DVR, Restart TV, Local Video On Demand, Advanced Parental Controls, and Higher Quality Reception. Unfortunately, these improvements require some changes and existing DVR customers will lose their current recordings. Changes will start the middle of January, so please view all your recorded content. We hope you will love the new Star TV. All right, guys, welcome back. You can hear our um, thighs are really cooking up nicely over here. I've turned my burner down to low to medium low. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add in our rice. So I just have the bowl in the bag rice, which um, you can buy any kind. This is what we had at the office and I'm trying to utilize another way that you can really save money, utilize things that I have in my pantry and in my refrigerator. So I'm gonna do two bags of this. I've got my water boiling and you just simply throw that in and I'm gonna push it all the way down. And we want to let that boil for 10 minutes. So I will check on that in 10 minutes. The next thing that we are gonna do is add some vegetables. Now I have a couple different vegetables that we had already um, had in the refrigerator or in the freezer. Now, um, this is about a cup of frozen celery. And this was, a, we had a bunch of celery, we chopped it all up and we just stuck it in the freezer. And it's really good for things like your soups or your stews where it's not a really big deal for it to stay crunchy. Once you freeze that, it's not gonna be um, nice and crunchy as what you would kind of envision your celery to be like. So I'm just gonna toss that in with my chicken here. All this is gonna cook for a bit, so it's definitely okay if the chicken's not quite done yet. Um, we are gonna let it simmer for just a little bit. That helped to cool down our, um, our meat there for a second. All right, the other thing that I had was some carrots, and these are just that shredded bag of carrots. Um, yeah, you know, easy enough needs to be used, so we're gonna throw that in. Now your recipe calls for, I believe it's 24 ounces of the frozen mixed vegetables. So here I'm just using vegetables I have on hand, vegetables that were in my freezer. I didn't, it doesn't specify what vegetables would be good in this dish, um, but I feel like pretty much any vegetable would be tasty. So this is a cauliflower and broccoli mix that is frozen or was frozen. So we will add that. And we're just gonna let that all cook together. So anytime you are thinking about um, trying to find a recipe that will work for your family, definitely think about what you have on hand. What could I make with um, what I've already got so that I don't have to go and spend more money at the grocery store. And I'm gonna throw this lid on it just so it'll start to heat up those frozen vegetables just a little bit. 
All right, so the next thing that I have, I already had an onion, so I am gonna add that to my recipe as well. Um, we're just gonna use half of the onion because that will be about the amount that we need. We don't want it to be overpowering. I think some other vegetables that would be really good in this, peas would be great. Um, we have those carrots in there. You could even go the route of like squash or zucchini. Um, really any vegetables that your family enjoys. And that is one reason why I picked this recipe because it is extremely versatile and it is a great way for you to utilize what you've got or what is on sale. So for our onion, I always just cut it in half. I'm gonna use this other half later and then I'm gonna chop off our stem end and I'm going to dice this up. So doing those small slits kind of in our grooves here. So just keep in mind, really any, um, anything you have on hand, anytime you are cutting up fresh vegetables, you can also freeze them if you don't think you're gonna utilize them on time. But this is a great one if you've just got a bunch of leftover stuff that you need to use from your fridge or from your pantry um, or from your freezer. And this is a, a good one for you to be able to do that. So I'm just gonna dice these up nice and fine just so that it's not like you get a big old chunk of onion. So another way that you could really pump this up would be to add like um, beans if you just don't have the, the money to go and buy your protein. That will still give you some um, protein in there, but it would be a little bit cheaper. So I'm gonna add this to our pot. And I'll add this in, we'll take a short break and we'll see you guys back in just a second. Just because something may work, doesn't mean it's right for your business. Let Star Communications knowledgeable consultants help you customize a hosted voice system that's right for you. Our dedicated experts work with you to understand your business needs and guide you at every step from choosing and installing services to ongoing maintenance and support. Contact STAR today. All right, welcome back guys. So um, everything's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and add about um, two cups of vegetable broth to our vegetable and chicken mixture over here. And um, this would be a great time if you did have uh, that leftover chicken stock or if you had made that homemade chicken stock with the, the pieces that we didn't utilize in our whole entire chicken, you could do this, that chicken stock instead. You can also make your own vegetable stock, which is pretty simple. You just do your water and uh, different, whatever different vegetables you want to use in there. I hate doing that simply because I feel like then the vegetables are not quite as good to use. And I'd rather eat the vegetables than just let them become stock. So for me personally, I would rather uh, make my own chicken stock, but not necessarily make my own vegetable stock. So we did that. We're gonna let this kind of come up to a boil and then we'll add the rest of our ingredients there. And then our rice is done. Our rice is completely, it's been boiling for 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna drain that here and we'll let that kind of cool down. These, um, the, the bag rice can get really, really hot. So just keep that in mind. If you are handling it, it's gonna be difficult for you to touch with your fingers. So sometimes I'll use a fork to pick it up or I'll even run it under cold water, which will stop the process of it cooking, um, but it also is gonna cool down your rice. So if, depending on if you're gonna throw it into something else to heat it back up, 
um, you might have to heat it back up if you run it under that cool water. So that might not be your best option for that reason. So we're just gonna set this to the side for now and let that cool off and do its thing. So the last couple things that we have here, this is a very simple recipe. Um, we have our different spices, which is just curry powder and garlic powder, or sorry, ginger. And then we also have um, some coconut milk. Now, if you're buying canned coconut milk, for one, you need to shake it, shake it really well, because if you don't, it will begin to separate. That water will kind of rise to the top and more of the milk will kind of go towards the bottom. Um, I chose the light coconut milk that is unsweetened. So that way we're not adding any sugar to it. We still get the creaminess, but we're not getting the saturated fat because coconut milk does have saturated fat in it as well. If you think about coconut oil, it turns solid at room temperature, the same as our butter. So in order to kind of just reduce that a little bit, I just buy the light option. Um, you can buy whatever. The recipe doesn't call for one over the other. Um, and this was actually on sale for me this week, so that worked out as well. Um, so another thing that we can think about too, when we are trying to save a little bit of money at the grocery store um, and stretch our food dollars is to utilize recipes that are simple. And there is a resource that we have called budgetbites.com. We will link them into the show. Um, but they have actually the price of each food item that you are gonna be using and really break it down for us. So it's a really great way for us to see how much a recipe might cost. And keep in mind that this is for the whole recipe. It does break it down per serving. So for this recipe, if you exclude the chicken, we're looking at $5.93, which equals $1.48 per serving. So very, very cheap, very affordable. Even some of your fast food restaurants right now are pretty pricey. I don't know if you guys have noticed that as well. It seems prices are going up everywhere. So by making your own meals at home and trying to use recipes that are gonna be conscious of your food dollars, that's an excellent way for you to kind of stretch those a little bit further. Let's see. Still got, there we go. All right, clearly our water or our vegetable broth over here is boiling, lots of steam there. So I'm gonna take that off and just add in our coconut milk. I'll cool it down for just a second. And then we are going to add in our spices. So we need a tablespoon of that curry powder. I think this recipe would be delicious if you don't like curry. You could absolutely leave this out and just do the ginger, maybe even add some garlic to it. It would be really good. I know curry is a big one that some people love it. Some people, it's just not for them. This doesn't use a ton, but curry powder does have a fairly strong flavor. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you smell it and you don't like the smell of it, it's generally what it tastes like. So it's a good one that you can give it the sniff test and, and determine before you just dump that in there. And then we have about half a teaspoon of ginger. We have a big chunk here, so I'll just dump that in and we will give it a nice stir. And it gives it that really pretty yellow color. So that's what you get with the curry it becomes that nice yellow color. And what we want it to do is kind of cook down, begin to thicken up just a little bit. So we're gonna take a short break. We'll let that this do just that. And we'll see you guys back in just one second. Let's get out of here. Protect what matters most in your life. 
with security from Star Communications. All right, guys, welcome back. So our uh, curry and vegetables and chicken is all cooking nicely over here. It's bubbling just a little bit, and that's exactly what we want. Um, we just want the flavors to really meld all together. So as it's cooking, um, that will help to bring out all the flavors of all the different yummy stuff we've got in our dish. So the other thing that I was gonna add was a little bit of spinach. I had this fresh spinach um, in our, our refrigerator here. And this is one, you don't wanna add it too early just because it does wilt down. Um, it's really more of something you would add towards the end of your cook time. Uh, we, it is gonna still cook down a little bit, but it's not something that you wanna overcook because it can get kind of brown and, and ugly looking. So we're just gonna sprinkle some of that in. And this is another way to, of course, just beef up whatever you're making um, with a little bit more vegetables. So uh, spinach is a great way to do that. And I feel like it always gives stuff a really pretty color. Now, in terms of the recipe called for that 24 ounces of, uh, of frozen vegetables, that breaks down to about seven cups of vegetables. So if you are doing something as I am where you're using a bunch of different vegetables that you had on hand, things from your freezer, things from your fridge, um, different things, then it would be about seven cups. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes we have to do a little math if we're, if we're experimenting a little bit with whatever our recipe calls for. And that looks good. You can see the spinach is already cooked, so we're gonna set that to the side. And our last step is to add the rice. Now I probably could have just done one bag of rice here. We'll see how just one looks and then I'll decide if I'm gonna add it to it. But now that it's cooled a little bit, you can just pick it up and give you yourself a little bit of space between um, the rice and the plastic and then it will cool off and then dump that right in. And you could leave this on the side as an option to add, you know, people could add it however much they wanted. I'm gonna mix it in just because I think it'll look pretty and the rice will also kind of take on some of that curry flavor, the curry and coconut, which to me is just so, so good. And I am, I think I'm gonna add just one more thing of rice. So this helps to, again, beef up what you're cooking. So if you're trying to make it stretch, add some rice, add some pasta, add those vegetables, and you can help to make it stretch even further. Very easy. So some other tips for you if you are trying to find ways to kind of cut costs on your meals or stretch your meats a little bit further. Um, I mentioned even adding some vegetables to whatever dish you're making. So I've made this before, but we've done a lot of making the um, mushroom beef tacos or mushroom beef burgers or things of that nature. Adding mushrooms with our um, our meat to our spaghetti sauce. So mushrooms do kind of, they look a little bit more like meat. I won't say they taste exactly like meat. They do take on the flavor of what you pair them with and they are definitely a great complement to a meat. So if you are doing something like ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken, um, you could absolutely add half beef, half mushrooms and that way it'll give your, whatever you're making, more, it looks like there's more meat in it, but you're adding a little bit of extra vegetables to it. Um, so that can help to cut down some of the cost that you would be spending. So that is another great tool for you. Um, doing a vegetarian dish one day a week can help you to save a little bit of money. Um, but if you have meat eaters in your house and they just can't imagine the thought of not having a day uh, dinner without meat, um, do something like this where you're taking a meat that you already have and you're fixing it into what would be a vegetarian dish. So you don't need quite as much meat. It's still in there. It still gives them the flavor that they're looking for to feel like they've got a really meaty dish. 
um, but it, you're not using as much meat and it'll help to save you a little bit of money in your pocketbook as well. So hopefully this has been helpful to you as we start to see some of these prices increase. Um, this is a really great recipe that's extremely versatile. And remember, if you're just not a curry person, you can leave that out. You could still make this and add, I think garlic would be great to this. Just do ginger and garlic um, and go that route instead. So I hope you try it. Let me know if you do. And we will see you guys next time on At the Table.